Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to be working on a job that I should have done a while ago but I kept putting it off and that is to finish off this table for my mill here and I mean the table's pretty much complete the only things that are missing here are the drawers for the front and I'm forever going over to another bench and getting collets and parallels and tools and other bits and pieces. So I want to keep all that stuff in some drawers in the front of the mill stand here. So when I designed and built this mill stand, I put these uh, bits of steel in here for the mounts for the rails. And they're all drilled and tapped out. So that's all complete. All we need to do there is just put the rails on. So they just bolt on the side there, pretty easy. But I need to make the drawers up that go in here as well. So there's three uh, drawers down the bottom here. And there's also a chip tray at the top here, which I want to bolt to a piece of wood that I'm going to have at the front, which I'll have on the drawers as well uh, to make it all look the same. And then a handle on that so I can pull that chip tray out to empty it. So this is a big sheet of panel steel, 2400 by 1200 by one millimeter thick. And I'm marking out the width of the drawers here. So I'm gonna get the three drawers all the way down the length of it. And I just need to cut off this bit on the left. So it is a big piece and luckily I built this welding table with this extendable bit that comes out and I'm able to put the whole sheet on there and clamp that down uh, so that it can be cut off. So here we are cutting off the strip and I have a handy helper in the background there. And then after that we cut off the first piece for the first drawer. I mark it out and this is just a simple box so it's 120 millimeter sides we're doing and they get all drawn on there and then we cut out the corners so that we can fold the sides up now this is a bender i built a few years ago it can do 1200 millimeter wide sheets of panel steel and it works really well it just clamps or bolts to the welding bench there Now this bender is only just a standard bender, it's not a box or pan bender. But I did make these pedestals on the right hand and left hand side there that can allow this to be mounted higher. And that allows me to bend those other two sides. Now we mount them all up and clamp them up so I can tap them and then fully weld the corners. And then we clean all those corners up with the grinder there. Now I'm welding in some drawer separators here. This is 2 and 9 16 by 1 8 bits of steel. And each drawer has a different configuration depending on what I'm storing in it. Now these separators also provide rigidity for the drawer as well. And to make it a little bit stronger, I'm just putting some bigger tacks in these corners. Then we give everything a clean up with a wire wheel on a drill. Here I am bolting in the rails here. So they all get bolted in. There's three rails on each side and they went all in there nice and easily. Uh, but the part of the rail that gets bolted to the drawer itself needs these holes a little bit wider for the bolts that I had. And I'm marking out where that rail goes on the drawer, down the center. And I'm marking out here where the first hole goes. And that hole gets drilled and then we bolt on that rail 
and once that's nice and tight I can work out where the bolt hole goes for the one at the back that gets punched and then we drill that out for the pilot drill and then we come back with another drill and then that gets bolted on and the remaining holes get drilled out so there's five holes and bolts for each side then I turn it over and we work on the other side once that's done we test out the drawers in the stand itself and here is the last drawer and they all work beautifully in there so now I need to put the face panels on the wooden face panels so I'm putting this bit of tubing here and getting that all lined up so that all the face panels are left aligned Then I'm marking out and punching where the holes need to be drilled for the screws that screw from the other side into the wooden panels. And just screwing on the panels here. And that works nicely. I'm spacing out so that there's a gap in between these panels and I put some hot glue on there and press that onto the drawer so that I know exactly where to screw those screws into the front panel. Now the next step is to make the handles for the drawers. So I'm using some 25 by 50 millimeter tubing here. There cut all the way up the tubing, one cut on each side, which gives you kind of a handle shape. Those handles are then cleaned up on the belt grinder and all the corners are rounded round so that there's no sharp corners for when you're opening and closing the drawers. And I clean up these pieces with the wire wheel because they had a little bit of surface rust on them. Now I need to drill the bolt holes for them. These are going to be M6 bolts that go on here to hold them onto the wooden front panels. I've bolted on the right hand bolt here and I'm just getting it nice and level and then I will clamp it and drill a hole in there for the second bolt hole and that's basically how I bolted them on the front. Here are all the parts ready and cleaned up ready for painting. Once they're painted it's pretty much just assembling everything and putting it all together. The rails get screwed, one on each side, of course. Then those drawers are all put into the cavity. And then we work on the front panel. So I'm putting the front panel on the chip tray first. There's two bolts for the handles, and then there's the screws that go in the ends there, the wood screws. And then tighten those handle bolts up. works nicely. The handle goes on to the top drawer panel and then that's put on to the drawer. So locking nuts go on there and again we put the wood screws in and then tighten up the M6 bolts. And the third drawer and the fourth drawer. This is like that yoga mat stuff that you buy. It's quite cheap, but it's very nice material, this, um, and that will work really good for the bottom of the drawers. So I'm just sort of marking out where I need to cut it. And the material is all cut to shape to fit those separate panels in the drawers. And here I am, putting them in the top drawer.
I got the storage drawers on the mill stand uh, completed and I think they came up pretty good. So at the top here, this is just a chip tray um, for all the chips that fall down from the mill. They can go into here, this can be taken right out and emptied. Uh, it's just lightweight, it doesn't need any bearings or anything so it just slides in there. Here's the contents of the top drawer. I wanted to put stuff that I frequently use in here. So these are all the ER40 collets, ER32 collets here. Um, these are the kind of cases they came in. So I'm going to make up some more storage holders for these collets so that they all fit in here properly and sort of not loose like these ones here. I've got my parallels there, I use all the time. These are ER32 and ER40 square and hex blocks here. Um, they're kind of used a bit. In the back corner, there's um, some 90 degree and 45 degree machinist squares. And then I've got some angle blocks in the wooden box there. And underneath that, there's a depth micrometer. And there's a couple of little lathers here. I use that for centering up the rotary table. And there's another MT3 ER32 collet chuck there. Here's the second drawer. The end mills is kind of in the front here. There's a bunch of them in this box here. I really need to sort them all out. Um, there's some drill bits there, some dovetail end mills here, my machinist jacks. Um, this side, some measuring equipment. There's the uh, tachometer there that I use until I get one put onto the mill here. Um, there's an angle gauge there, and I've got some uh, dial gauges over there. The, the larger and more weird end mills down the back, um, and there's the boring bar there. And this is the bottom drawer. So probably stuff that I really don't use that often. There are some hole saws in the black box here. Um, the MT3 drill chuck here. There are some slitting saws in this container here with the fly cutter and in that box there there's some module one gear cutters. There's a bunch of uh, larger drill bits there. Um, I bought those at a kind of a garage sale and there's just some um, extra mill bits at the back here. There's a couple of plates I made up because the cast iron ones on the mill uh, started to crack and I asked a friend to weld those together, which he did, and then I was able to make these ones here, and I'll put them on the mill uh, once I have issues with the original ones. So if you like my videos, click on the subscribe button, and click on the bell if you wanna be notified when I release new videos. I hope everyone has a great day, and thanks for watching.